welcome to my student support system in today's class we will discuss about male reproductive system this lecture is in english and if you want to study in hindi just click on i button and you will get link of hindi lecture or you can directly visit to channel my student support system what is reproduction reproduction is the process of producing offspring and human reproduction is a sexual reproduction which needs two types of systems male reproductive system and female reproductive system in today's lecture we will discuss about male reproductive system the organs of male reproductive system includes the testes a system of ducts accessory sex glands several supporting structures including scrotum and penis now we will discuss these organs one by one first is scrotum scrotum is a pouch like structure made up of skin subcutaneous tissue and muscles which holds the testes the scrotum look like a single pouch of the skin but it is separated into lateral portions by a median ridge known as raphe internally the scrotal septum divides the scrotum into two sacs so this is septum and these are two sacs of the scrotum each contains a single testes the septum is made up of subcutaneous layer or tissue and muscle which is called darter's muscle the darter's muscle which is a type of smooth muscle is also found in the subcutaneous layer of the scrotum here so this is darter's muscle and here also darter's muscle the cremaster muscle is a series of small bands of skeletal muscle that descend as an extension of the internal oblique muscle through the spermatic cord and surrounds the testes so here it is cremaster muscle the location of scrotum that is it is it lies outside the body or pelvic cavity and the muscular action of the darter's and cremaster muscle they help to regulate the temperature of the testes normal sperm production requires the temperature below the body temperature means 2 to 3 degree less than the body temperature in response to cold temperature the cremaster and darter's muscle contract and due to contraction of these muscles the testes move closer to the body and they absorb body heat the contraction of darter's muscle causes scrotum to become tight and wrinkled in appearance which reduces the heat loss and during warm weather or warm season the process is reversed relaxation of darter's muscle leads to loosen the tightness of the scrotum and testes move away from the body and due to disappearance of wrinkles the heat loss is permitted now we come to the testes the testes or testicles these are paired oval organs or oval glands in the scrotum measuring about 5 cm long 2 to 5 cm in diameter each testis has a mass of about 10 to 15 grams the testis originally develop near the kidneys in the posterior portion of abdomen and they usually begin to descend in the scrotum through inguinal canal 
during the later half of the seventh month of fetal life. A serous membrane called tunica vaginalis partially covers the testis. So here it is the tunica vaginalis, this layer, this covers the testis. Internal to the tunica vaginalis, there is a white fibrous capsule composed of dense irregular connective tissue known as tunica albuginea. So this is tunica albuginea. It extends inward forming the septa that divides testes into a series of columns or compartments known as lobules. Each of the 200 to 300 lobules contain 1 to 3 tightly coiled tubules which are called seminiferous tubules where sperms are produced. The process by which the seminiferous tubules of the testes produce sperm is called spermatogenesis. The seminiferous tubules contain two types of cells. Spermatogenic cells or spermatogonia which are the sperm forming cells and another one is Sertoli cells which have several functions for supporting the spermatogenesis. Spermatogonia which remains dormant during the childhood and actively begin producing the sperm at puberty. In humans, spermatogenesis take place approximately 65 to 75 days. It begins with the spermatogonia which contains diploid number of chromosomes that are 46. The spermatogonia divides continually through the mitotic division to produce more cells. Some spermatogonia stay close to the basement membrane of the seminiferous tubule acting as pool of the cells to take part in the future sperm production. The rest of spermatogonia lose contact with the basement membrane and squeeze through the tight junctions of blood testis barrier, undergo developmental changes and differentiate into primary spermatocyte which are still diploid means they also have 46 chromosomes. So this is the basement membrane and some spermatogonia downs, uh, goes downwards and these are primary spermatocyte which have 46 chromosomes. Later, next, in next stage, the primary spermatocyte undergo meiosis 1 that is a type of cell division and produce two secondary spermatocyte. Each secondary spermatocyte has 23 chromosomes means haploid number and each secondary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 2 and second cell division that is meiosis and produce two spermatids and each spermatid has 23 chromosomes. The final stage of spermatogenesis is spermiogenesis in which the development of haploid spermatids de to develop into the sperm. The sperm then enter into the lumen of seminiferous tubule, fluid secreted by Sertoli cells, pushes sperm along their way towards the ducts of testes and maturation of sperms continues. Now we come to the sperm. What are sperm? Sperm or uh, we can say these are the uh, special cells which take part in the fertilization and these are the come from male sex organs or testes. Each day approximately 300 million sperms complete their process of spermatogenesis. A sperm is about 60 micrometer or micron long and contain several structures such as head this one, mid piece and tail. The flattened pointed head of the sperm is about 4 to 5 micron, 
this is micrometer means micron long and it contains a nucleus with 23 chromosomes in front of the nucleus there is a cap like vesicle filled with enzymes that help the sperm to penetrate the secondary oocyte known as a chromosome the neck of is the constricted part just behind the head and it contains centrium. The middle piece or mid piece contains mitochondria which provides energy for locomotion of the sperm to the site of fertilization and for sperm metabolism. The last and longest portion of the sperm is tail which help in the movement of the sperm. Once ejaculated, the most sperm do not survive more than 48 hours within the female reproductive tract. Next one is epididymis. Epididymis is a coma shaped organ about 4 cm long that lies along the posterior boulder of each testis. This one, this is epididymis. The efferent duct from the testes join epididymis at the larger side here. That is called head. They join here. The body is the narrow mid portion of the epididymis and the tail is smaller inferior portion. The ductus epididymis would measure about 6 meter in length if they were uncoiled. It is lined with the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and encircled by layers of smooth muscles. Functionally, the epididymis is the site of sperm maturation, the process by which the sperm acquire motility and the ability to fertile ovum. Vas deferens. The next duct is vas deferens. The ductus difference or vas deferens is about 45 cm long. It starts from the tail of epididymis and ascends along the posterior border of epididymis through the spermatic cord and then enters into the pelvic cavity. The terminal last portion that is dilated of the ductus deferens is called ampulla. The muscularis is composed of three layers of smooth muscles. The inner and outer layers are longitudinal and the middle layer is circular. Functionally, the ductus deferens conveys sperm during sexual arousal from the epididymis towards the urethra by peristaltic contractions of muscularis. Spermatic cord. In the spermatic cord is a paired structure whose main function is to support and suspend the testes into the scrotum. It consists of ductus deferens, the testicular arteries, veins, autonomic nerves, lymphatic vessels and the cremaster muscle. Ejaculatory duct. Each ejaculatory duct is about 2 cm long and is formed by the union of ducts from the seminal vesicle and the ampulla of ductus deferens. They terminate in the uh, prostatic urethra where they eject sperm and seminal vesicle secretions. Seminal vesicles. These are seminal vesicles here. Seminal vesicles or seminal glands are pouch like structures and about 5 cm in length. Through the seminal vesicle ducts, they secrete an alkaline viscous fluid that contains fructose, prostaglandin and clotting proteins and become a constituent of semen. The alkaline nature of the seminal fluid helps to neutralize the acidic environment of the male urethra and female reproductive tract that otherwise would inactivate or kill the sperm. Semen is a mixture of sperm, seminal fluids, a liquid consists of secretions of the seminiferous tubule, seminal vesicles, prostate and bulbourethral glands. The prostate 
is a single donut shaped gland. It measures about 4 cm from side to side. This one is prostate here. 3 cm top to bottom and 2 cm from, from front to back. Prostatic secretions make about 25% of the volume of semen and contribute to the sperm motility and viability. Bulbourethral glands. The paired bulbourethral glands are, or we can say Cowper glands, are two uh, glands which are of the size of a pea. They are located inferior to the prostate on either side of the membranous urethra. Bulbourethral glands secrete an alkaline fluid into the urethra that protects the sperm by neutralizing the acids of urine in the urethra. The penis. The penis contains urethra and a pathway for the ejaculation of the semen and excretion of urine. So this work is common for the urine pass out and semen ejaculation. It is a cylindrical in shape and consists of a body, glass penis and root. The body of penis is composed of three cylindrical masses of tissue. Each surrounds by a fibrous tissue called tunica albuginea. The two dorsolateral masses are called corpora cavernosa. So these two late dorsolateral masses are corpora cavernosa. The smaller midventral mass of is corpus spongiosum penis. This one is corpus spongiosum which contains spongy urethra and keep this urethra open during ejaculation. The distal end of the corpus spongiosum penis is slightly enlarged, a cone shaped and is called glass penis. Skin and subcutaneous layer encloses all three masses. These three cylindrical masses are also known as erectile tissue. Erectile tissue is composed of numerous blood sinuses lined by endothelial cells and surrounded by smooth muscles and elastic connective tissue. Covering the glass in uncircumcised penis is the loosely fitted prepuce or foreskin. The root of penis consists of a bulb of the penis. Here, this one is the bulb of penis which is extended portion of the base of corpus spongiosum and the crura of penis. These are crura of penis which are two separated and tapered portion of corpora cavernosa. The bulb of penis is attached to the inferior surface of deep muscles of the perineum and is enclosed by bulbo spongiosus muscle. Crura of penis bends laterally away from the bulb of the penis and attaches to the ischial and inferior pubic rami and is surrounded by the ischiocavernosus muscle. So this is all about male reproductive system. In next class we will discuss about female reproductive system. To get notification about those lectures, upcoming lectures, you can subscribe the channel. You can follow Facebook page and for making your notes, you can visit mynursingstudents.blogspot.com and you can also find the link in the description box. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and join Facebook group Nursing Notes. Thank you. Have a nice day.